has decried the worst in security situation across the country. Chairman of the Forum, Ekiti State Governor Coyote Fayemi, said this in a statement titled, NGF expresses solidarity with Governor Zulum and Borno State. He expressed gratitude to God for sparing the life of the Borno State Governor, Babagana Zulum, and members of his team who were attacked by Boko Haram terrorists in Borno last week. Joining us live is Dennis Amakri, former Assistant Director of the Department of State Services. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. Security continues to be a huge issue in Nigeria. What are we not doing right in spite of the constant conversation about this? We have been confronted with this particular problem. And um, I think we are talking too much than actually doing the real thing. Uh, the governors are meeting right now. And um, if you remember very well, about two months ago, they met. And then they discussed about how much money they are going to give to the service chiefs and all the rest. And the situation remains the same. So, um, is it just brainstorming that they do? Or they are going to come up with concrete steps on what they want to be done? And I think that's where we are now. I hope that this particular meeting that they're having today is going to address some of this. Okay, um, we'll look forward to what, you know, the um, resolutions of the meeting are, but they are also set to meet the president. What difference do you think that this would mean? They've met it before, just like I said. And, um, you know, I, I want concrete steps to come up because what is happening in the country right now is very, very unacceptable. Uh, we have some very significant issues that have, have uh, you know, come to pass. Uh, and the shooting down of the United Nations helicopter, um, the attack and the killing of uh, some of these uh, aid workers, and now the governor, you know. Uh, just think of the worst case scenario where the governor was actually shot dead or he was kidnapped. Then you will know the importance of this particular situation. So I think... Um, there are many, many suggestions, many, many uh, the security agencies have given out uh, some of their best reports, but the political will have to take place now of standing up and then addressing them. Um, you, you just mentioned, of course, about the governor narrowly escaping death, um, what, um, of course, when uh, his uh, convoy was attacked. Is this in any way a statement to indicate that no one is safe, regardless of status in society um, in Nigeria today? Can you hear us, sir? If a governor with uh, all the problems. Okay, so it is a very, very serious problem uh, when a governor in a convoy can be attacked. So how do we, how do we, how do we take care of the ordinary person? Uh, and then um, it, it is, it is just left for a lot of people either to fend for themselves, and that's why you see that many people are now thinking of self-help. Uh, they want to form a regional security outfit. Uh, they want to form some kind of. Uh, uh, security uh, that can take care of them because we have the government security agencies in some areas uh, that are not covered and uh, these people are left to their own devices. All right. I, I, I'm also going to ask uh, because I, I want you to um, um, express yourself more on this particular you know, question. You, you, you mentioned earlier that the governors had met and had decided you know, on funds that they were going to be putting together you know, to you know, of course, uh, boost the fight against terrorism. You've also just mentioned the political will. Um, if you were um, in those positions and you were going to be, I mean, if, if it was left to you to actually do what was necessary for dealing with security challenges in Nigeria today, what would you say is the top thing that we really lack? Because it, it obviously cannot be funding anymore. So what would you say is really lacking okay right now the funding has been taken care of although it's not enough i can tell you that because we need to spend more money on defense and security uh, nigeria with 200 billion people uh other neighbors of africa who are smaller than us are 
spending more dollar amounts on security and defense. So we need to take care of that. But when it comes to the structure itself, I think there is very, very important need for us to rejig, or should I say revitalize, the security structure in the country. Besides the security uh, structure, we also want them to uh, revitalize or look properly into the criminal justice system because they all work together. Yeah, you, you, you cannot arrest. The police can do the best they could arrest cleats, and then, of course, they are um, uh, locked up without going to court. Uh, so there is no example set for people who are even thinking about it. So there should be some kind of, you know, deterrence, deterrence for criminally minded people. And uh, I think this is basically uh, the, the, the simple things they could do. Uh, let's uh, um, take advantage of these low-hanging fruits, but they will need serious political will because I think everybody knows this. Even the president himself said it when he called the service chiefs and told them that, you know, there will be no more excuses. So if there are no more excuses, why are these things still continuing? Is it part of corruption that is really retarding the problem? So these are things that we have to you know, look at. And what would you say it would take for a complete rejigging of the structure of our security, security architecture? Because there has been questioned on so many um, occasions. What would you think it would take for Mr. President to overhaul the entire system um, if that's also part of the solutions that are needed? Um, because I remember, you know, a few days ago, he was quoted saying that, you know, the Nigerians would know that they've done, you know, their best with regard to security. So what do you think it would take for Mr. President to agree to have a complete rejig of the system, if that's what's necessary? I think I will advise Mr. President to take a stand, come out and take a stand on this particular issue. Um, yes, he has said that, uh, that they've done their best. When they say they have done their best, the security agencies have done their best. But people have been talking about the military. Why is it that the three service chiefs of the military are not retired because there are other people. See, he's a soldier, he's, he's a general. And there are people that are in the wings. And if they don't take over, Well, at this time, their, 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 their period is going to, um, that hierarchy is very, very important. Uh, the sequence, the sequencing of that uh, succession plan is very, very important. He should allow that succession plan to take on. These guys have done their best, yes. They've really, really served this country. And I think it's time for them to take a bow. He has to do that. And, and then, of course, the state uh, governors have to come out and then uh, agree on creating the state police, bring security down to the grassroots. It is not a matter of get, getting security to protect yourself or to pursue your uh, political enemies or stuff like that. That is not the idea of state police. The idea of state police is to bring security down to the grassroots where the laws and the bylaws of the local areas will be, you know, enforced. And at the same time, crime is always committed at the grassroots, you know. So people around, let us involve the people in creating the security architecture in, in Nigeria. All right, and I'm, I'm going to just quickly throw this one before we um, let you go this morning. You are um, a former assistant director of the DSS, and so I'm sure that you've worked a lot with intelligence. So um, what would you say we are lacking with regards to intelligence gathering um, in the fight against insurgency and in the fight against banditry and kidnapping? Um, and also, what would you say is our saving grace and solution moving forward? Uh, you know, the security agencies, even my former former service where I, I worked before, are doing their best. It's like a mechanic 
who is using his bare hands to do certain things that electronics can easily tell him to do. You know, when you go to Yamoto uh, mechanic in Nigeria here, he, he is using guesswork because that's what he's doing. You know, he's trying to, oh, is this one? No, is that one? You know, but they're available right now for, you know, for you to see what is wrong. And that is what we should be applying right now in our security architecture. You know, when you want to gather intelligence, there are so many different uh, and, uh, um, uh, things that you can use, you know, in gathering. There are, there are satellite systems, there are drone systems, there are all kinds of systems. You know, telephone, gather all the intelligence you need and, in fact, help you in processing those intelligence to be actionable ones. So what are we waiting for? Why are we so shy from technology? The whole world has gone technological, and I think we can do that, and it will take us far, far, many, many years ahead.